The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. On this episode, we're talking about why corn growers should manage corn like wheat. Now, that's probably a conversation you haven't heard. Kinburn, Ontario agronomist Paul Sullivan is my guest. We're going to discuss how wheat growers are actively managing stress in the crop at key growth stages and how corn growers can use these strategies to protect yield potential and put more corn in the bin. Hi, Paul. Hey, uh, thanks for dropping by. Great to have you on the Corn School. Uh, it's always great to be here, Bern. Hey, Paul, um, you called me the other day and said something I've never heard before. You know, you basically said, you know, growers are missing an opportunity to manage corn. We need to manage corn like wheat. Now, Peter Johnson, it's magic to his ears, I know, but hey, that's a big statement. Um, you know, what are wheat growers doing that corn growers should be doing? Yeah, it's... Uh struck me a, a bit ago with some of the discussions around yen uh, that management of wheat has increased significantly in the last five years. We are using growth regulators. We're splitting nitrogen. We're doing tissue samples. Um, we're, you know, looking at stands. Um, we're just, I guess, looking at a number of things. And in that time period, you look at uh, the improvement in wheat yield, a lot of it has come from managing the crop in that time period, from growth stage 30 to, to 39, which really is equivalent to where we're at right now with corn at V7, V8 in Ontario. There's the next three weeks when that corn goes from where it is until tassel mm -hmm. is exactly the same stage. Now, you say, you know, corn growers should be more focused on that V7 to tassel stage um, when yield is being set, Paul. You know, what's happening in the crop during these stages? You know, how much of the plant yield is being determined? Well, there's quite a bit of the plant yield is, is being finalized. Uh, <clears throat> like the thing with corn, and like anything, uh, at the time I see it as maximum yield. You put it into the ground and it has the genetic potential and, and field potential of probably 650, 700 bushels. I think that's uh, roughly, doesn't matter, it's high, much higher than actually we get. So from there, uh, from the time it goes until finishes, it uh, we're, we're losing yield. And uh, I talk about managing yield loss over the season instead of trying to build yield. So in that time period, that three week time period roughly, um, we are covering off about 70% of the yield which kind of comes in determining kernel number for the for the uh, for the for the actual corn plant and uh, so uh, up until um, up until that time period uh, the number of rounds are being determined the girth and um, then from there until the uh, the tassel time we have the maximum number of uh, potential kernels that's been determined on the plant and uh, that's always in flux um, but the, the thing is, it's uh, if you break it down into time period, about 70% of the yield is, is determined in through that uh, V7 to VT. Yeah. And in that time frame, um, Paul, you know, corn growers, not a lot's going on, right? It's, you know, it's be between side dress nitrogen and first fungicide application. And we're not really actively, you know, actively managing the crop, right? No. Um, it used to be that once we got weed control done, um, you know, we came back with the combine, you know, and that's the same thing with wheat. Uh, in some cases in wheat, we never even used weed control. We just, you know, planted it. So with corn, corn management has always been more intensive, I think, or the want to corn management has been always more intense. Like corn, corn is a real crop. Wheat really, you know, is a crop that's kind of secondary. Peter Johnson would not agree with it, but corn and beans are definitely more significant in in um, my uh, my uh, process of, of managing than wheat. Um, but uh, you know, Peter has dragged us into managing wheat like like a lot of uh, of others in in the industry and with things like Ian. So corn management. You know, we've relied on the companies on the genetics to, to, to roll us ahead. We've gained that 1% to 2% per year. We're leaving a lot on the table in my mind. Like, I, I look at corn hybrids as like hockey hockey players, and 
the hybrids we have available to us that are on the market that are sold. Uh, they're the, you know, they're the Connor McDavid's, the David Drysaddles, you know, those sort of thing. Some, and then, and then you've got some, you know, some, some Connor Brown, some, some diggers and, and doers and stuff like that. So you know, we got to figure out how to, how to manage these, these basically in the field. And uh, once we do that, then, you know, we can kind of get, get a little more uh, potential out of the crop. Yeah. A lot more so, hey, let's look at some data you have on corn genetics. Let's go there. Um, specifically flexed hybrids to identify some management opportunities. What do you see here, Paul? So, yeah, with, with these flex hybrids, we've uh, done some work to identify um, the, the, we call them the characteristics of the hybrids. Some hybrids tend to flex, and flex means move down. Flex is, is losing uh, or reducing. It's not increasing. Um, so some time, and we look at the time period when that happens. Typically in Ontario, there's three important time periods. There's, there's the girth development time period. Uh, there's the, the length time period of the cob. And then there's the last 30 days, which is the kernel weight time period. And that is genetically, um, uh, related or that relates to the genetics of the, of the corn itself. So once we identify that, then we can identify that say if a corn hybrid has a, a tendency to uh have have uh an impact of stress in that kind of what we're moving ahead in this time period of the next 30, th- three weeks then if there's something that we can um reduce the stress um and and generally um the stresses are a combination of things but then um if it's really dry and we see corn that's starting to wilt up well to some extent maybe that's where a potential biological product or combination of biological and say root enhancing foliar comes into play to help that plant through a period of of limited you know of, of sort of things that are there so i think it kind of pulls together the whole concept of environment which we have no control over uh genetics which we buy the genetics that we think are going to do the best for us uh, and then management management is very complex but also very um very um sort of beneficial and mm-hmm. and and that so we we make or break kind of some of those things by what we do or we don't do and sometimes we don't know what we don't know but once we know something then you know you have the option mm-hmm. of doing something or not doing something. So one of the things that that leads into is something like tissue sampling. And we've, we've really upped the amount of tissue sampling we have done over the last couple of years. We worked with Chad Bangan from Nutra, Nutra Ag and Nutra Analytics. Great resource. They have their Nutra Analytics program where we can send them samples, get the results back. He does some interpretation on it. And it, it's a tool, very in-season tool that I call it like our balance sheet for the crop at that particular time. June 26, we've got this sort of thing happening in the plant. It, it's To me, it's like um, I just had my blood work done yesterday for an appointment with the doctor. Like if I walk in and talk to the doctor and tell her how I feel, like at least I can talk. A plant can't talk, but the plant can show you things, but it still doesn't sort of show you the total picture. So from that standpoint, it's a uh, uh, to me, it's kind of some things that we used to use, not use much at all, we can use now. Hey, final question for you, and that is, you know, you, you've got your blood work, um, you've got over the next f- few weeks. Um, why, we, we talked about biologicals, so what else are we looking to address, you know, from a stress mitigation perspective? What else can we do? Well, <clears throat> some of it, there may be nothing we can do. That's the bottom line. And, um, you know, we just... We just kind of walk away. But I always figure, you know, and, and we've got some stresses in the crop this year. There's something that we need to be able to learn when we are at that extreme. Like if you got a really good crop or you got a really tough crop. This year where we're sitting right now, we're sitting on probably some really good crops. So people, people to some extent are maybe not as convinced as myself and some other folks I've talked to in the last couple of days. But get out look at the crops see what's there and you can always do better and um if for example there's say some um see from a tissue sample that maybe there's lower boron than is optimal and it's a suboptimal thing 
if you go back and you were planning to put a fungicide on at VT, which many are, probably that's one of the nutrients should be in the mix that you put on. Uh, so that's an action that's going to be there. Uh, we are also seeing in some cases uh, um, at, at that time, say, suboptimal, uh, say, zinc levels and suboptimal sulfur levels. Well, sulfur you can apply. You can go back in and apply that. Zinc is more of a foliar. So if there was, well, the other thing we saw is magnesium, magnesium deficiency. And I think that's been pretty widespread across the province for, for, um, for many reasons. But uh, there's a product you can put on with magnesium and boron that becomes to again a hybrid that has that tendency for that time period to to not want to be stressed probably could add 10 bushels and right. uh, you know that's something we're trying to to verify position it based on the hybrid the other management that's there and and the weather and you know the weather the weather has been stressful this year but we got to kind of alleviate the stress to the crop. And if we alleviate the stress to the crop, probably going to alleviate the stress on the grower and the agronomist. Yeah, you said it. Hey, Paul, this is a, this is a great conversation. Thanks for the phone call. And uh, I know our viewers are going to enjoy it. Uh, good luck. Uh, have a great season. We'll see you down the road. Thanks. Thanks for the time today. Appreciate it a lot.